Good morning. Good morning. Our call to worship can be found in Psalms 91, 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Bow your heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we invite you into our midst to tabernacle with your people. We thank you for your abundant goodness and grace, and we are eternally grateful for the new mercies you show us every morning. As we go into this service, we ask that you be the director, orchestrator, organizer, and chief musician, and we will be careful to give you all the praise that you so richly deserve. Amen. Can we stand and turn in our hymnals to hymn number 526, Because He Lives. Oh, it's also on the screen, hymn 526.
Happy Sabbath, Macedonia. Happy Sabbath, Macedonia. All right. We're glad to see your smiling faces this morning and the nice windy weather with the sunshine is a blessing. So tomorrow, Sunday, April 28th at 9 a.m., the Pathfinders are having their all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast. So we expect to see all of you out here to support our children. It is $10 and any extras like meats or veggie meats or eggs or so forth are an extra fee. So please come out to spend your money in support of our children. As well as it's at 9 a.m. As well as our flea market and tent pinching will also take place tomorrow. So it's a fun full day tomorrow in support of our Pathfinders. Sabbath, May 4th, um, the Touch 10K, Pastor will go through that and to uh, remind us of our support of that. Sunday, May 5th is our leadership team meeting. All board members should be in attendance at 10 a.m. And May 11th, the wonderful women's ministries was scheduled to have our monthly meeting. But we do not want to inhibit our men from doing something wonderful for our mothers on through men's ministry on May 11th for Mother's Day Sabbath. So that will be tentative until we hear further from our wonderful men on what will be happening. Um, Sabbath, May 18th, there is an ushers meeting. So please, ushers, if you don't mind staying after for that wonderful meeting. And of course, something super and more important, June 1st is going to be our communion. We will have rehearsal from our staff on May 31st. Have a blessed Sabbath. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord or one more time to all of our online guests this eve this morning we uh, this afternoon we want to say happy sabbath and what a joy it is to be in worship today we have we I like this idea of actually starting worship 1 hour later amen this is nice. I feel already on supercharged. We had a wonderful time this morning on walk on the walk for the hungry around the link, and it was an outstanding event. And I just want to let you know it was truly a blessing uh, to see our saints out as with our pathfinders from not only our church but from the West Philadelphia church as well. And so we we feel I feel we did a great work this morning. It is a prelude to what's going to happen next Sabbath. So during, right after worship, we're going to have our Mace University time, which is our Sabbath school time. I want to spend a few minutes during that time for you, church, to kind of talk with me and share with me what we'd like to do next Sabbath for our outreach Sabbath. The um, Allegheny East Conference has been tagged as one of the conferences across the country that are part of the Touch 10,000 Sabbath. So next week... For worship service, we are going to be doing a service project, and I want to kind of talk with you um, this afternoon after worship and kind of get some, throw out a couple of ideas of what I'd like for us to do for our worship experience next week. And so if you can stay back for Sabbath school, for those of you who don't normally stay back, it would be great to have your input, and we'll spend just a few minutes during our Sabbath school time discussing that. I uh, also want to let you know that... Um, <clears throat> This past week was Administrative Assistance Week, and I need to see uh, D. Patton real quick. Need to need D. Patton to make her way to the um, platform extremely fast. She may be in her office, Laura. Can you grab her um, very quickly for me? Uh, it was Professional Administrators Week uh, day this week, and I want to take this opportunity to really uh, uh, bless my administrative assistant church clerk d Patton. she seems to help me keep things uh on point and on target and um, sometimes i drop the ball and things get double booked um it's not her fault it's usually my fault because we're not good at communicating but i wanted to just take this opportunity and thank her for her wonderful gift of ministry to me and i know she's coming here i got a, i got a minute anyway here she is d I hope you were, I hope you were doing something, D, to kind of help me, um, to help me stay on target. That's why I couldn't find you. But this week it was Administrative Assistance Week, D, and uh, I just, on behalf of your pastor and good friend, just wanted to say thank you, sister, for your support of the ministry, for keeping me on target, and that's a little something for you to enjoy your your weekend and your hubby with. 
Um, if you all need a babysitter, you can definitely call Janine and I. Amen. We, we, we're making ourselves available for that date night when you all decide to, to do a little something with that. Do we have any guests in the, in the, in the, in the house this afternoon? I keep saying morning because we usually here in the morning. Do we have any guests here today? Amen. God bless the Lord. We're so thankful for all of our guests. We want to put something in your hand. Ushers want to put something in your hand. Just a little token of appreciation to say thank you for being a part of this worship experience. We call our worship uh, experience, we call it encounters because uh, we believe that one encounter with Jesus Christ can change your life. And so today we are going to pray over you because silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, we give to you. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has a way of making a way out of no way. And so our prayer for you is today, not only that you enjoy this awesome worship encounter, but we pray that the Lord will bless you richly for the time that you have given this morning. Could you lift your hands again, uh, uh, those guests, because the ushers, they have something they want to put in your hand. They just need to be able to earmark where the guests are as they move very quickly. And, on be, and you, get to keep, you get to keep the pen. Amen, somebody. That's your gift specifically. And we want you to remember us. So every time you need to write a check or you need to write some bill, you can just remember that church blessed me and poured into my life because we're going to ask God to bless you richly. Without any further ado, we want to pray a special blessing over our guests for those online in the house. We also want to take up our thank offering this morning. And we, this is an opportunity where we can just say, Lord, thank you for the good for being good in our life. Thank you for being merciful in our lives. Thank you for being a blessing over our lives. If you are watch, watching on stream, you're probably wondering why we're not dressed up. Today was dressed down Sabbath. And so we have, we have taken the privilege to, to do service projects in the community. And so we were like, we're not going to be putting on no suits and then doing service projects. We figured Jesus will accept us for our service and accept us how we come in. Amen, somebody. It's not how you look. It's what's in the heart. Amen, somebody. And so we want to just worship God today with our giving. And as I pray, we will then have the deacons come down. If you're a guest in here today, you don't, don't feel compelled by any means to give an offering. But if you'd like to sow a seed into our ministry, we would greatly appreciate it. One of our primary objectives this year is to take the city of Chester for Jesus Christ. And we're working along with, alongside of the, the um, Chester Ministerial Alliance to bring an anti-violence initiative, by the way, I want to let you know your prayers, church, have been answered. We started off this year in a season, 21 days of prayer and fasting, and our specific request was to help God stymie the violence. Well, this week when I sat down with Detective Rogers, our security um, chief who watches over the campus, he shared with me that though there have been shootings in Chester, are you ready for this? There have not, there's only been two homicides in our city all year long you ought to bless the lord at all times we had two in one we had like four in one month this time last year and we've only had two and it's only what's this april headed into may and so they are well behind the ball and we believe that that is because we've been praying god is on watch and our wonderful police department and the citizens are are being more active in trying to make our community a very bright and wonderful community so let's continue to pray and our giving goes towards those initiatives to help us make Sester a safe community. If you could stand with me as we pray and as we get ready to take up our thank offering. Father, we thank you for the privilege to worship today. We are so delighted that we can come into your presence one more time. God, we have guests that have come from near and from far. And we're praying, Jesus, that you will bless them with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. God, if there is a need financial, if there's a need health-wise, if there's a need relational-wise, God, we pray that you would come in like a mighty Russian wind. And bless our guests both in the house and online God we have no idea what our guests are in need of but we pray that an encounter with you will change the whole trajectory of their life and then God we're praying for your service may we worship you in the spirit of truth and holiness and may you find our worship acceptable in thy sight have your way in this place Holy Spirit and we'll be careful to continually give you the glory in Jesus name the people of God say together amen thank you so very much Please be seated. For those who want to give their thank offering, we'll take it at this time.
Happy Sabbath, everybody. Anybody came to praise the Lord today? You might be able to lie to me, but you can't lie to the Savior. Anybody came to praise him today? Anybody came with a praise on their lips this morning? Anybody realized that you didn't have to get up this morning? You still sleep out there. I said, anybody realize that you didn't have to get up this morning? But God, I need to tell y'all something. The Bible tells us that all things, and we know that all things work together for our good. To them that love the Lord, for them who are the called according to his purpose. And what that means to me is what this song means to me, that God is intentional. If all things work together for my good, that means God's intentional for my circumstances and situations. That's exactly what it means to me. So this song says all things work together for the good because he's intentional. It's a catchy song. You'll be able to sing it with us. We want everybody to praise to our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Hey. song says all things are working for my good cause he's intentional never failing I know that all things are working for my good cause he's intentional never failing everybody see Anybody know that all things are working for your good? And it's never failing. Never failing. All, things. all things are working for my good. Because he's, he's intentional. Never failing. Yeah. Never failing. All, things are. all things are working for my good. 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 You know why? Because he's intentional. Come on, everybody. Come on. Come on. I said he's intentional. And he's never failing. He is a healer. Hallelujah. Oh. He's intentional, and he's never failing. I said that all things are working for my good, because God's intentional, never fail. Everybody sing. Because he's intentional, and he's never failing. All things are working for my good. All things are working for my good. All things are working for my good. Hands up. Oh. 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 right here it says it says I don't have to worry because it's working for me hey it's working for me it's working for me come on talk to yourself come on everybody say I don't have to worry because yes sir anybody know what's working everybody know what's working I don't have to worry because hey 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 
It's working for me. I don't have to worry because whoa. It's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. Cause he's intentional. Come on, y'all say. Cause he's intentional. My God is never failing. No, no. Yes, he's intentional, and he's never failing, never failing. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. My God will do it. 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 Because I know all things are working for my good. Because he's intentional. Never fail. Real soft, everybody sing. Oh, things are working for my good. You got to believe it. And he's never failing. Last time, all things are. Why? He's intentional. Never failing. Never failing. Come on, somebody in his place. When you begin to think about your circumstances and your situations, you realize that he's intentional and he's never going to fail. Come on, you can respect what I'm saying right now because I'm in that position. I can, I can speak right now because I, I'm going through that. And I know that he's intentional despite what my situation may be, despite what my circumstances may go and may look like, but I know that my God, who's strong and mighty, the Lord strong and mighty in battle, he's intentional. And he's never failing. Come on, somebody say never failing. Never failing, 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 never failing. Hallelujah. And because we know it's intentional, the next song says. He is exalted. When we know when we know that God is just great, we just want to exalt exalt him after that. When we realize that he's intentional and after he brings us through our circumstance, then we just want to exalt him. The song says he is exalted, the king is exalted, and I will praise him. Anybody want to praise him today because how good he is? Come on, you ought to put your hands up if you can. I mean, if God gave you some feeling in your hand, you could put it up and give him a praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm able to move my arms today. <laughs> he is exalted. The King is exalted. And I, I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted. And I, I will praise him. Everybody sing. Exalt him right now. And I, and I will praise. God is exalted forever. And I, said he is Lord forever say heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name he is exalted yes he is Oh, 
from the top again. He is exalted. My king should be exalted. And I, and I will praise. He's exalted forever. Come on, church. Lift your voice and say, He is Lord forever. Heaven and earth, heaven and earth, rejoice. He is exalted. Lift your voice, lift your voice. He is exalted. Come on, lift your voice in this place. He is exalted. Oh, and I. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. Say, Lord, we love you. We adore you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. Say Lord, we love you. Say Lord, we love you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you. You've been faithful. And we're grateful. We give you praise. We give you praise. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. You've been faithful, and I'm grateful. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, we give you praise. God, you're awesome, Lord, you're awesome. We give you praise, we give you praise. Yes. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. He's been better than your praise. If you think about your best praise, God is better than your praise. If you think about your best worship, God is better than your best worship. He's worthy of everything that you have.
we just want to praise God right here. I praise you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul. I praise you, Lord. What's the word? Real quick, come on. I praise you, Lord, with all my soul, with all my soul. I praise you, Lord, praise with my mouth, praise with my life. Everything I do, I praise you, Lord. Everybody, I praise you, with all my soul, with all my soul, I praise you, Lord. Praise with my mouth, praise with my life, everything we do. I praise you, Lord, with all my soul, with all my soul, with all my praise with my heart, praise with my life, everything. Take it up. I praise. With all my soul. With all my soul. I praise you, Lord. I praise with my. Everybody praising. Say everything we do. Oh. Everybody sing. Oh. Everybody say. Everything we do, we'll praise. Whoa. Everybody sing. Everything we do, we'll praise. One more time. Every praise. With all my soul. With all my soul. I praise you, Lord. Praise with my heart. Praise with my life. Everything we do, yeah. Oh. Everybody sing, no. Everybody sing, no. Everything we do, we sing. Hey, one more time. Oh, everybody sing oh, everybody sing oh, everything we do one more time one more time I praise you Lord with all my soul with all my soul I praise you Lord praise with my heart Praise with my life, everything we do, yeah. I praise you, Lord, with all my soul, with all my soul. I praise you, Lord, praise with my mouth, praise with my life, everything we do, oh yeah. Praise Him. Come on, come on. Praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, oh praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, everything I do. Everybody just come on in, praise Him, lift your voice, bless His name, somebody give Him glory, praise Him, everything we do. Come on, I like that. One more time, everybody just praise him. Lift your voice. Bless his name. Give him glory. Praise him. Everything with everything. One more time, everybody just praise him. With your soul. With your voice. Bless his name. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Think it. I praise you, Lord. Last time, just praise him. He's done some good things. Give him glory. 
for what he's done in your story praise him everything we everything everything we do oh yes hey everything in all things everything are everything everything we everything and everything we everything oh yeah everything everything we do everything we do oh yeah come on just before we come to the altar this morning for prayer Psalms 137 Israel finds herself in a very precarious predicament because of their disobedience to God and their struggle to live according to his will as part of the consequences he's allow, he allows them to go into captivity and so the psalmist writes a lament, if you will, regarding their situation. When he says in Psalm 137, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captors asked, for, asked of us songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. And Israel responded, how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? And God's reply to them was, if, somebody say if. If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. God says you can sing because I shall not forget. And as a matter of fact, he says, prophetically speaking in the book of Isaiah, Jesus, the question is asked by the prophet Isaiah, how can I forget you? Can a mother forget her suppling child? Lord's response is, I shall never forget you, for, for you are inscribed in the marks or the palms of my hands. When they hung him high and stretched him wide, when they put those nails in his hands, Jesus was fulfilling the prophetic utterance of Isaiah. How can God forget? He shall never forget, for we have been inscribed in the palms of his hands. I don't know what you may be dealing with this day, but I know that we have a prayer answering God who's always on his J-O-B, regardless of what the situation may look like, regardless of what it, may, what it may smell like, what it may taste like. How can we sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land? Because God says, if I forget you, may my right hand lose its skill. We want to remember this morning, I got a message that Sister Lori was was in the hospital. We want to continue to remember on our list all of our prayer requests. Uh, we're lifting up Sister Lou Sapp and we're lifting up continually uh, Nick as we go before the altar of prayer. We're continuing to lift up those who are bereaved um, and struggling and we're continuing to lift up our city and we want to just continue to pray because prayer changes things and God is doing a mighty work even though we may not seem like he's working. He's at work and he's making a way out of no way. So this morning, uh, this afternoon, as you bow your heads, Elder Kathy is going to lead us to the altar of grace and mercy as we begin to pray and cry out to the Lord our God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. As we have prepared our hearts and mind, we come boldly 
before the throne of grace. And we just thank and praise God for who he is. Father God, we thank you, dear Lord, because you didn't have to wake us up this morning, dear God. But Father God, you have blessed us to see another day. You have given us another day and another opportunity just to lift up your holy name, dear God. Father God, you've been so good and merciful and kind to us, dear Lord. So Father God, we come into your house this morning and we just lift up your holy name because you are worthy in spite of everything we may be dealing with we may be going through right now, dear God. Father God, I know some of us is perplexed in our minds and our bodies, dear God. Some of us is um, facing hardship, dear God. But Father God, we know that there is nothing too hard for you, dear Lord. So Father God, as we come before you, dear Lord, allow us to cast all our cares upon you for your word said that you care for us, dear God. So Father God, allow us to leave them here at the altar, dear God. And Father God, being the God that you are, you're so faithful, dear God. I know that you hear our, pro our, our prayers. I know that you hear our cries, dear God. So, Father God, we just lift you up regardless, dear God. Father God, sometimes we are unfaithful, dear God, but you are always faithful towards us, dear Lord. And we just thank you. We just thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise, dear God. Father God, I'm praying for those. We are praying for those that's on the prayer list, dear God. Sister, Brother Lou Sapp, dear God. Brother Nick, Heavenly Father. Father God, I'm also keeping Sister Harris in prayer, dear God. Father God, only you can change, dear God. Father God, the world is changing fast before us, but there's one thing about you, dear Lord. You're true and you are not changed, dear God. So Father God, all that we are facing with, all the world that's facing with, Father God, Father God, we know that you have the power, dear God, to correct and to change, Heavenly Father. So we just thank you, dear God. Allow your spirit to be in this place this morning, dear God. Allow your spirit to fall afresh upon us dear, this morning, dear God, because in your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your presence, dear God, there is healing, dear God. In your presence, dear God, you will make a way out of no way, dear God. So we thank you, dear God. Father God, we're not going to be burdened down, dear God, what Satan puts in our pathway, dear God, because we know that we, say, we serve a Savior who has died on the cross for us and has risen, dear Lord. So we just thank you, dear God. We ask that you just bless each and every one of us that has made their way on this day, dear God. We ask that you just bless the visitors, Heavenly Father. Bless our speaker this morning, dear God. Bless Pastor, dear Lord. And Father God, as he uh, give us the word that you have given in his heart to deliver today, dear God. Allow that word, dear God, to fall afresh on us, dear God. Allow that word, dear God, to be a, a first encounter to someone today. Allow that word to change someone's life today. Allow that word to save somebody today, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I'm asking that you just bless our church, Macedonia, Heavenly Father. Father God, I have seen so many blessings and growth in this ministry, dear Lord, and I'm so glad to be a part of it, dear God. So, Father God, continue to bless each and every leader, each and every member, dear God. And, Father God, allow this word that goes forth today to touch our hearts. And, Father God, in our minds, give us a new way of thinking. Give us a new way of doing. Allow us to be kind and loving to one another, dear God. And, Father God, also, dear God, allow this church, dear God, to be a shining light before the city of Chester, dear God. Father God, with our prayers, dear God, that has gone up, dear God, since the 21-day fast, dear God, we have seen miracles happen, dear God. We have seen the death toll, dear God, just decline, dear God. And we give you glory. And we give you honor. We give you praise. And, Father God, we know, dear God, there is much more for us to do, and I know that you will empower each and every one of us to do what you have assigned us to do, Heavenly Father, and we just thank you, dear God. Continue, Father God, to look over our pastor and our first lady, Heavenly Father. Continue to strengthen him and lead him and guide him, dear God. I can't imagine, dear God, that pastoring is easy, Heavenly Father, so give him the strength, dear Lord. And Father God, I'm asking, dear God, his word Dear God, that he has prepared for us today, dear God, it will be a changing factor in our lives each and every day, dear God. When we come and we sit under this word every Sabbath, let us not come and, re and return the way that we have come in, dear God. Allow this word to change our lives. And Father God, I'm asking that you just bless this service. Bless each and every one of us. Bless our families, dear God. And continue on the prayer list, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Did you notice that on the piano was one of our praise and worship leaders, Simone, multi-talented. We are blessed to truly have the gift of our young adults as well as our young people leading in worship. I want to invite you to stand on your feet for a few moments this morning as we just contemplate a quick look at Scripture. I want to invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to John, the 20th chapter. <clears throat> the whole month we've been preaching a series entitled Six Hours, One Friday, and it's the journey of the cross. And last week we celebrated Easter um, and the resurrection, and the story is almost complete. It's almost complete. We have one more sermon after this week to complete the entire walk with Christ. While many churches usually preach their Easter sermon on Easter, we've done a series to trek through the journey that, tri that Christ took. And we shall end not at the cross and the resurrection, but also at the coming of Christ. Because he is coming again. John chapter 20, verse 19. I want to draw your attention. I'm going to read just two verses of scripture from uh, the English Standard Translation on on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. For a few moments, I just want to ask you to contemplate with me the subject for about 15 minutes. Remember. Remember. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this service. We thank you for this Sabbath day to worship you in the spirit of truth and holiness. God, I pray that as we lift up the cross of Calvary, as we lift it up high, God, open up our eyes that we might see this empty cross and understand even right now that Jesus is interceding. Open up our ears this morning, in this moment, God, that we might hear the Holy Spirit's pleadings. Draw near to our hearts, O oh God, that we might sense your eternal leading. And God, we pray right now that as you are in this place, as you are blessing my neighbor on my left and my neighbor on my right, God, I pray that you fail not to bless me in the midst. Have your way in this moment, we pray, in the wonderful name of Jesus, the people of God said together, amen. Remember, it was dramatic and more importantly, a traumatic end to a story gone wrong. Their hopes were hijacked when he died. Their help was halted when he died. Their expectations crushed because he died. Their beliefs were beaten because he died. Kenlin, their destiny was destroyed because he died. Elder Tony, it was not supposed to end this way. This was never the plan, at least not that they could remember. What did they miss? Where did they go wrong? How in the world could this happen to them? Why in God's creation did this have to happen to them? The church of Jesus Christ, non-existent as a group of men, are huddled in a second floor room in Jerusalem. Three years equivalent, equivalent of seminary training, and they have no idea what to do. Three years of walking with the miracle worker and nothing makes sense. They were bold and courageous before this hour. Now they're like timid soldiers, reluctant warriors, and speechless messengers. The only thing noteworthy of them, Elder Jason, now is the fact that they had the audacity to get up and lock the door. They're locked in, and by their accounts, they are locked out of the purpose of their last three years. 
What made them leave, Andrea? Their families, their jobs, their businesses, their homes. All of it, Janine, was a blur and futile. Bird holding them hostage, holding them hostage were memories of promises, watch this, that they, that they had made but not kept. They told Jesus they would fight to the death. They told him they would never leave his side. They told him it was crazy to think that they could ever consider running away as an option. Yet when the Roman soldiers took Jesus, Jesus' boys took off. Every last one of them. Max Lucado adds in his book, with the very wine of the covenant on their breath and the bread of his sacrifice in their bellies, they fled the scene and left him to his persecutors. They left him to the mob. They left him alone. They left him to the whims of fake worshipers. They left him for their own safety. They left Jesus by himself. And before you get high and mighty, and I got to stop and ask the question, have you ever made a promise to God only to see it sidelined by your fear of life? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You ever told God you would, he could count on you until the devil came by and created just a little skirmish in your so-called life? You ever, told, you ever been bold in your faith about your faith only to find out that you are eventually doubting the faith you claimed that you had because of some unforeseen circumstance you're now in? Oh, y'all want to be holy right now and act like it's not, I'm not talking to you. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you testified about tithing but you could not pay your rent. When was the last time you prayed to share your faith and you sat down next to someone you knew was unsaved and you started playing on your phone instead of at least saying hi? Yeah, 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 yeah. When was the last time you claimed you loved God but, told, but took hold of your most cherished pet sin instead? Oh, I could keep going. But y'all kind of quiet, so let me keep moving. They're locked in a room for fear of the Jews. They were bold, Sister Nina, a week ago, but now they're locked in a room for fear of the Jews. They were bold when they were feeding 5,000, but now they are locked in a room. They were bold exercising demons going city to city and healing folks from town to town. But now they are locked in a room for fear of the Jews. James and John, the boys of thunder. Oh, yeah, they were real bad wanting to call fire down from heaven. But now James and John are locked in a room for fear of the Jews. Peter was quick to rebuke Jesus of all that. Oh, you ain't going to go die. I'll die with you. But now Peter is locked in a room for fear of the Jews. It's amazing how, how mighty our faith can be when our faith is not being tested. It's amazing how bold we are for God when the crowd is cheering for God. It's wonderful to stand with Jesus so long as everybody else is with Jesus. But when the crowd, but when the crowd turns and the soldier sees your leader and he dies on a cross between two thieves, I got a question. Where were you six hours one Friday when they took him, stretched him wide, and nailed him high? Where were you those six hours one Friday? What do you do? When you find yourself locked in a room for fear of the Jews. The Bible says for fear of the Jews, they're locked in a room. The Bible says on, 
on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. I wonder as they're locked in that room, Verda, I wonder after his death that they tried to forget the last three years. I wonder if they tried to move on, life, move on with life and erase the prior three years. I, I wonder if they tried to forget. I wonder if they tried to forget everything that happened, thinking about what they could do now that he's dead. I, I bet you they tried to forget. And I wonder as they tried to forget and they thought about the leper, I bet you the leper reminded them of Jesus' compassion. I bet they tried to forget, but then the storm reminded them of the day he silenced one. I bet you they tried to forget, but when they saw a child, they were reminded of how he held one and blessed it. And I bet you if they tried to forget, but they saw a lamb, I bet you they remembered the face bloodied and bruised with eyes full of love. There's no way they could forget three years. And so as a result, instead of forgetting, they came back, Stephen. Locked in the room for fear of the Jews, but they did come back. Dismayed and confused, they came back. Desperate for answers and discouraged by the day's events, they came back. Frustrated and fearful and fragile as they were, they at least came back. And thank God they came back to Jerusalem, to the upper room. Two nights ago, one of them had cursed and denied him, but he came back. Several of them fell asleep on him while in the garden, and he was praying for strength, but they came back. The others fled from him the moment the mob snatched him. But at least, Tony Heath, they came back. Does this sound familiar? 2,000 years ago, and not much has changed, has it? Honestly. The church finds itself paralyzed in an upper room. We come together, this is going to hurt, I'm telling you right now. We come together just with just enough religion to worship, but not enough passion to go out. We can assemble in this room in a nice number, but we can't assemble outside at a secular event to walk for hunger. If our doors aren't locked, they might as well be locked. When we look at the communities around us in which we find the church, last time I looked, I saw a little bit of faith and very little fire. I know, here it is, here it is, Sister Esnoy. Hey, I love, we love our community. Just last year, Pastor, we handed out door-to-door -door Bible studies, and we're expecting a response from those Bible studies last year in a day now. In a day now. Somebody's going to respond to a Bible study. You know we care about the hungry. That's why we have a food pantry. I'm just not sure when the pantry's open but I do give money to at least keep food in the pantry. Mm. My church is trying to reach the world with the gospel. That's why I give a dollar to missions and an offering. And when I have tithe, I do give tithe. When I've got tithe. But God is good. The church is filled with good people. Lots of ideas, plenty of good intention. We got budgets, Bible studies, and butts in the pews. We got meetings, words, promises, and while all of this is going on, the doors remain locked and the story stays a secret. And the secret of Jesus' resurrection 
Max Lucado calls it upper room futility. Confused ambassadors behind locked doors. And don't think I'm talking about only Macedonia, because the same thing will happen tomorrow on Sunday. Everybody will worship in their buildings. Meanwhile, after worship, the building will shut down and needs will go unmet. What's it going to take to turn the tide? What will unlock the door and unleash the power? What has to happen in the 21st century that, that made the church lit in the first century? And I'm so glad you asked the question, even though you didn't ask it, but I'm so glad you asked the question. And it's right here in the text. What's it going to take? This is right here in the text. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Here it is. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. In the room, among the throng, Jesus shows up. Among the shallow conversations they hear out of nowhere, peace be with you. Watch what happens. As soon as the words Kelvin Walker has said, the eyes are shifted, heads are lifted, every mouth open, and Thaddeus looks at the door. It was still locked. Simon glances at the window, and not a shutter shook. It was a moment they would never forget, and there was a story they would never cease to tell. The stone of the tomb was not enough to keep him in, and the walls of the room were not enough to keep Jesus out. The one betrayed sought out the betrayers. The wounded one left behind came back to them from behind a rock and what did he say to them he never said to them he never rebuked them for their impulsive scampering there was no I told y'all so there was no how could you leave me at a time like this rebuke not even a visible sign of frustration or irritation Jesus simply says to them peace be with you the very thing they did not have was the very thing he offered them, peace. Peace, in the midst of being fail, in the midst of failing, but not failures. Peace, because they were still his disciples. Peace, that gives them power to the powerless and it gives help to the helpless peace that's able to steal the storms of life and anchor a boat at the shore of hope peace like a river flowing that would never run dry peace was with them and God's peace he gave to them and this is what Jesus said to them in John chapter 14 my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid in the upper room, there was peace and God's power. I want you to see this. In spite of what they failed to do, in spite of living up to all that they said they were going to do, Jesus came back with a show of grace that covered the failing hearts of every disciple. Peace is in your midst. My peace I give to you. And it was from that upper room. Watch this, y'all. It was from that upper room and the peace that Jesus offered that, that allowed Peter, this, this reconverted now transformed preacher, to go out on the day of Pentecost. And he preaches like, like the power of God. And he says, therefore, let all of Israel know and be assured of this day that God has made this Jesus whom you have crucified both Christ and both Lord and Christ. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus is preaching, I mean, Peter is preaching the power of Jesus on the day of Pentecost. There is no timidity in Peter. There is no reluctance to give a revelation in one sermon on one event with the power of the Holy Ghost pouring through him and pouring from him. 3,000 are baptized on one event because the Holy Ghost fell. And from that moment, from that spark, with that peace from God, a whole church is 
his birth and the momentum is instant. Mothers make haste. Fathers forsake idols. Business owners break chains. Sinners call him Savior. Children cry out Christ. People call or people are starting to call them Christians. Because he came to a room where they came back and they preached Christ and him crucified. We in muddy water, so I might as well go ahead and make it muddier. Peter preached Christ crucified. He didn't preach the law. Mm -hmm. He preached Christ crucified. He didn't preach the prophecies. He preached Christ crucified. He didn't preach the Sabbath. He preached Christ crucified. He didn't preach any irreverent doctrine of state of the dead. He preached Christ crucified. Not because that was, watch this, the only topic, but because he could not exhaust that topic. He preached Christ crucified. And the question I have, the question I have, the question I have, the doors that unlocked the, the, the apostle's heart, what was it? I know he preached cru cru Christ crucified. I know the, the Holy Spirit and God's peace was there. But what opened the floodgates of commitment for the disciples to say dedicated and committed to a thing that looked like it was dead? And I'm preaching this right there in the text. Look what the text says. Jesus came and stood among them and, and, and said to them, peace be with you. And when he said this, he he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples, here it is, were glad when they. Let's just let that marinate for a second. They were glad when they saw the Lord. What unlocked their hearts? To preach, they saw Jesus. Okay. Let me try it again. Okay. 24 hours ago, they didn't have a life, and they were questioning everything about their existence. In the midst of their pity party, Jesus shows up. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, something's not. In the, okay. They had families that they had left at home, businesses that they had forsaken, purposes, goals, and retirement plans that they had forsaken, and Jesus died on the cross, and they were trying to figure out what do they do with their life in the aftermath. And in the midst of that situation, Jesus showed up. Oh, my God. I'm already making it clear. Okay. Maybe the organ needs to join me, and, they, and then people would be excited about the fact that Jesus showed up. The point, here's, I'm, 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 I'm oh God, help me. This ain't a deep point, but I'm, I'm confused because in the midst of everything that went wrong in their life, the only thing that had to happen for them to become convicted, convicted, convicted and committed was for Jesus to show up. And I'm still sitting here trying to figure out how when you, if you are in their seat and you got stuff going wrong in your life, 
If Jesus showed up in their stuff, in their life, and that changed them, I'm just trying to see how is it that when you hear that all he had to do was show up, that it does not put a smile on your face, that it does not get you to rock in a certain way. You still start feeling good because in their situation, when they turned their back on Jesus, he still showed up. Because if I were to go up and down these aisles, I could begin to preach about how you have turned your back on Jesus, denied the faith of the God that you say you love, turned and did all kinds of righteous and indignant things, and yet Jesus did not give up on you. Jesus has not given up on you. Jesus has not thrown you away. He has not forgotten about you. He's still willing to show up in spite of our showing out. He showed up even though they did not deserve it. They finally for themselves saw him in his flesh for themselves. Mary's testimony wasn't going to get it. Mary, I don't care what you saw, Mary. I don't care what you experienced at the grave, Mary. I need to see Jesus for myself. And when he shows up in the room, they heard Jesus' voice. And as a result of this encounter with Jesus, their lives would forever be changed from glory to more glory. Watch this. Much more would happen as a result of this encounter. Watch this. There would be nights, here it is, they would spend at home alone. There would be hunger that would harass their bellies. There would be rains that would soak their garments. There would be stones that would bruise their bodies and scourge their skins. There would be shipwrecks and lashings, and some of them would even die as martyrs, that would, and they would welcome it. But the thing that would stay with them, and here it is, come hell or high water, become the devil or the deep blue sea, was the very fact that the betrayer the betrayers got a visitation from the betrayed. And he came back not to scold them. He came back, watch this, to send them. Ah, not to criticize them for forgetting about him, but to commission them to remember. What are we supposed to remember, Jesus? Remember that he who was dead is now alive, and they were more guilty, but now they've been forgiven. Oh, God, I love what Juan Stam says. Juan Stam says it this way. Christ is the dead man who by his death put death to death forever. Oh, God, do you remember the single worst moment, Tanya, when you finally got it in your head that you needed to give your life to Jesus? Do you recall the day you said, yes, Lord, to his will? Yes, Lord, to his way? Do you remember the day your sins were red as scarlet and yet he washed them whiter than snow? Do you remember how you would tell anybody that you met back then how good the Lord our God was in your life? and how your life has never been the same. Do you remember when you at first experienced that love? Do you remember? I'm talking to you. Do you remember? I know what the problem is. Thank God you remember. Thank God we remember. Here it is, Tiger. Here's the point. Pardon truly received is pardon powerfully proclaimed? Pardon truly received is pardon powerfully proclaimed. This ain't a feel-good sermon, I know. Y'all mad as hornets. You are challenging me. You're saying I don't share my faith. Look, you're doggone right. That's exactly what I'm saying. Look what Lakato says. There is a di ooh, ooh, ooh. There is a direct correlation between the accuracy of our memory and the effectiveness of our mission. I want you to think about this. Think about the church. I'm not talking about coming to church and being holy. 
I'm talking about when the church goes out into the community. That's the mission. Not this. This is butter. The mission is out there. How is it that we can assemble for this, but we ain't trying to assemble for that out there? Mm, okay. Uh, okay, let me come a little closer. He ain't done. If we're not teaching people how to be saved, it's perhaps because we have forgotten the tragedy of being lost. It's going, it's going to get even more tighter, Jamal. Hold on. It's going to get more tighter. Watch this. He doesn't stop there. He says, if we're not preaching the cross, it could be that we subconsciously decided, God forbid, we somehow don't need the cross. They almost, before the church even got started, they almost forgot the purpose of Christ's coming. It was never to draw a crowd of followers. Christ came to make a church full of disciples who would then turn the world upside down. I'm going to go. I'm going to go because I've irritated y'all way too much. I promise I'm going to sit down in five minutes. I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul's last words to his young ministerial Timothy as Paul sat in a prison, chained on his hands and his feet. In the background, he could hear, he could hear the executioner sharpening the blade of the knife that would sever his head from his body. He's pinning 2 Timothy to Timothy, and in the letter to Timothy, Paul, in the midst of that, I can see him with a sparkle in his eye and a gently widening smile on his face as he writes the words, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, for this is my gospel. All he could tell Timothy that mattered while he's on death row was to remember Jesus. Not the law, Timothy. Remember Jesus. Not the church you're about to get, Timothy, and its challenges. Remember Jesus. Not the prophecies, Timothy. Remember Jesus. Don't even worry about your calling, Timothy. Remember Jesus. Not the struggles, Timothy, but Jesus. Remember Jesus, Timothy, not your haters. Remember Jesus, not your unfitness to stand out, Timothy. Remember Jesus, not your credentials or my mentoring. Remember Jesus, not your baptismal numbers, not your ad administrative prowess, not your invitations to preach all over the country, but remember Jesus, Timothy, and him crucified. And I can remember Paul now. He's probably writing a run, as we like to call it in ministry. We call this a run. You ready to run? Here's what it's called. He, he, probably, went on, he probably went on this run. He says, Timothy, as you remember, Remembering Jesus, and as you're getting fired up about Jesus, when times get hard, Timothy, remember Jesus. When people don't listen to you, Timothy, remember Jesus. When tears come, and they will, Timothy, remember Jesus. When disappointment is your bed, remember Jesus. When your backstabbers betray you, Timothy, remember Jesus. Or when the crowds forsake you, Timothy, remember Jesus. When you're misrepresented and misunderstood, Timothy, remember 
remember Jesus. When your haters parade all around you, remember Jesus. When people start looking at you funny, remember Jesus. When they tell you don't take all that worshiping stuff, remember Jesus. When you don't feel like it, Timothy, remember Jesus. When the world is falling apart around you, remember Jesus. When persecution comes, Timothy, remember Jesus. When everybody forsakes you, remember Jesus. When the backbiters stab you in the back and they smile in your face, remember Jesus. When you run out of money and you can't pay your bills, remember Jesus. When they diagnose you with cancer and the doctor shakes his head, remember Jesus. When you lose your ability to bend and you lose your ability to be self-determined, remember Jesus. When fear pitches his tent in your front yard, remember Jesus. Remember Jesus? Don't doubt the dogs. Remember Jesus. Remember Jesus, Timothy, when death looms. Remember Jesus, Timothy, when discouraged dominates. Remember Jesus when hate instigates. Remember Jesus when silence frustrates you. Remember Jesus, Timothy, when shame comes upon you. Just remember Jesus, Timothy. Remember his holiness connected with his humanity. Remember the sick, Timothy, who was healed. Remember the dead who were called from the grave by a Galilean accent. Remember the one whose eyes cried over Jerusalem. Remember Jesus. Remember Jesus. Even when things go wrong. Remember Jesus. Christ raised from the dead descended from David. Remember him. Next week, May 4th, is another outreach Sabbath. We ain't doing outreach just because we're just trying to find something to do on a church calendar. We're doing outreach because as a church, we're real good at coming to worship together. Where we fail is connecting with people who don't come to church with us. And so every Saturday, we put on our fancy clothes, get in our fancy cars, drive to these fancy buildings, have a real fancy good time, go back home, and then mind our own businesses. And many of us, not just our church, but many Adventist churches are in communities and they don't do much for the community at all. We drive in and we drive out. That is so unlike Jesus. It's unconscionable. And so next Sabbath, the Allegheny East Conference has determined that May 4th is Touch 10K. It's a Sabbath where we're called to be like Jesus and go and touch the lives of individuals. This sermon was intentional. Because if we can come in this audience and it's really nice, it's about 80 people in here right now. We've done two outreach projects. And at most we've had is 10 church members show up. When did Sabbath only become about worship? Read the Bible. Jesus got in trouble on the Sabbath because he wasn't in worship. He was healing people. There's some of us who think Sabbath is only about worshiping and that you're going to somehow burn in hell if you do something outside of worship on God's Sabbath day. Have you read the book of Isaiah? Where God says, this is my type of Sabbath that I've chosen. That you afflict yourselves on the Sabbath. Have you looked at Matthew 25 where it goes down a whole list of things where it separates the sheep from the goats? It's visiting those who are sick and in prison. It's clothing the naked. It's a whole list of things that are being done. 
And I know what we're going to say. Well, pastor, I can't do all those things. I got a job. Exactly. I ain't saying don't work. So let's do it on Sabbath then. If that's the only day we got available, then let's do it on Sabbath. Now what's our excuse? That's not good Sabbath keeping. If Jesus got in trouble for healing on the Sabbath, you're going to have to show me in Scripture where that's not appropriate for the Sabbath. So next week, touch 10K. We're going to have a little bit of worship, but it ain't going to be all this stuff that we normally do on worship. It's about outreach. Every Adventist church in Allegheny East Conference is supposed to be participating in this. I don't know what nobody else is doing. I just know our church is committed. And right after this worship service, we want to talk about what will be our outreach project. We may have a couple of projects. And I got some great ideas that I would love to throw out. And I want you to give me some ideas. There's not going to be a bad idea unless it's just ungodly. But I want us to brainstorm, and we can do several things. We got 10,000 people we want to try to touch in one day. 10K. If we just get 1,000, we've at least done a tithe of the 10,000 by ourselves. And I promise you, God is my witness. You're not going to burn and be out of God's grace because you went out and touched somebody on the Sabbath. If that's the kind of God we serve, then we deserve death because we went to help somebody who couldn't help themselves. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Simple appeal, real simple appeal. I preach what I preach not to annoy you and to antagonize you, but to challenge you, to stretch you, to help us grow deeper in our commitment to Christ outside of what we say but in our lives to challenge the boundaries of what we consider orthodoxy so that we can truly be used by God to affect change in somebody else's life it's not that Sabbath is only for worship, Sabbath is good for worship but it's also good for outreach so next Sabbath this is my appeal. If you're willing and you're able to be a part of our Sabbath outreach activity, I'm inviting you this Sabbath to stand to your feet in commitment that you'll be a part of it. It's a real simple appeal. You're saying, Pastor, I'm down. I'll do it. I'm with it. I'm, hey, let's, let's, I'm not sure what we're going to do, but I'm with it. Real simple. If there's somebody here today, you haven't committed to your life to Christ, I want to let you know, being a Christian is more than just having a belief in Jesus Christ. It's actually living the life the way Christ lived. And the way Christ lived was radical. He frustrated so many religious folks that they nailed him to a cross. He frustrated the government in such, that, in such a way that that the king, that, that, that Herod said, do you know, I, do you not know that I got power to crucify, I mean, Herod, whatever, which one of them, Herod, one of them said, do you not know I got power to crucify you? He told him, look, you ain't got power unless it was given to you up above. He did not let government intimidate him. He touched people where they were, how they were, so that he could make them different. Father, we're standing in agreement and commitment that we want to do more than just be believers in word, but we also want to be believers in deed. And God, we pray that as we prepare for next Sabbath, touch 10K. God, it's just 10,000 people you're asking us to touch their lives. You're saying, go outside the box, shake somebody's hand, give them a bottle of water, maybe say hi to them, have a conversation with them. Maybe put a track of belief in their hands. Maybe give them a Steps to Christ book. Maybe give them a, 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 a hand by maybe pumping their gas or maybe helping them do some laundry or maybe picking up some trash around their property. God, you're asking us to do something that would help make our community a little bit better and a little bit more 
like you desire. You're asking us to touch somebody's life, to be inconvenient, inconvenienced for one convenient day, your Holy Sabbath. And our desire, God, is to really just be pleasing to you, to glorify and edify you. And so our commitment this week, God, is to prayerfully contemplate what we can do, not just next Sabbath, but how can our lives beyond next Sabbath be a life that is committed to service, excuse me, for others. We don't just want to worship you on Sabbath, God. We want to worship you Monday through Sabbath. Sunday as well. We thank you for what you have done. Six hours, one Friday. We're thankful for how you commissioned the disciples and sent them out. And now, God, we stand so that you may send us out. And not wait till next week, but give us each an assignment this week, God. Put something on our heart. Put somebody in our path that we might be able to help. It could be somebody at a stoplight, God, with a sign that simply says, we'll work for food. You may be putting that person at just so we can give them a nice offering. God, you're going to have somebody come across our path who may need us to pull over on the side of life and to counsel them, to pray with them, to just maybe sit with them. Whatever it requires, God, this week before next Sabbath, help us to touch somebody else so that the gospel is much more than mere words, but their acts and deeds. Bless us, we pray today, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, the people of God say together, amen. Is there somebody here today that needs to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Rededication, recommitment, the doors of this church are open. Can never give a sermon without giving an appeal for Jesus Christ. Perhaps you're in this area and you're looking for a church that is trying its very best to be fruitful, to be meaningful to the context in which we've been placed, and you feel like there's something going on here. Tomorrow we got some stuff going on with Pathfinders. We're trying to raise $10,000 to send our Pathfinders to Oshkosh. And Pathfinders, for some of you who are visiting with us, who are guests, Pathfinders is our version of Boy Scouts. The challenge is our people truly do live according to the Word of God. We're not compromising any of the principles of the Word of God. Some of our pathfinders are redeemed. Some of them are not. Baptisms happen at Oshkosh. It is a mountaintop experience. So we're raising $10,000 to try to help them get there with all of their things. Tomorrow morning, we have this breakfast. We're having a flea market. Next, next Sabbath, we'll be going out for the Touch 10K. If you want to be a part of a transitional church that's about God's work, the doors of our church are open. Is there one? Transfer of membership, rededication, recommitment. Father, I've made the appeal that you've put on my heart to make. As we do every week, there may be somebody online who wants to sow a seed into this ministry, who wants to give their life and, and their, their family to the Lord Jesus Christ. God, right now on the tagline in the chat box, whether they're on YouTube or on Facebook, they can type in, I desire to become a certified, bona fide believer in Jesus Christ. If that is your will, take the time right now and post it even in the chat box on YouTube or on Facebook. And God, we will be praying for them as we welcome you to the body of Christ. And we will connect with you and give you someone in your local area to connect with that you might grow in your faith and admonition of God. Father, we thank you for the word. Hear our heart's prayer today. Bless us throughout this coming week in Jesus' name. The people of God say together, amen. Remembering Jesus. Pastor, you painted a picture for us right there. Thank God for that. Could the deacons and ushers, please, or just the deacons, come up for morning tides and offerings. I realize that some of us have no problem with returning our tithes, and some of us refuse to return our tithes, and there's others of us that can't afford or think we can't afford to return our tithes. I'm reminded that Jesus tells us that, see if I won't open the windows of heaven 
and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for giving us the ability, God, to return our tithes. God, we thank you for allowing us to return what's rightfully yours back to you. We ask that you bless it, God, and let it go forth for your ministry and for us to finish the work. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. quick message to the men uh, right after Sabbath school time we have an emergency men's meeting men's ministry meeting right directly after Sabbath school let's bow our heads for the benediction now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our father be glory majesty dominion forever and ever amen <laughs>